1st of February 2017, the Indian Finance Minister, Mr. Arun Jaitley, stood up this morning on the floor of Parliament to present the India Budget. It is indeed a very momentous event. And that's because this is used as a platform, not merely for presenting the financial state of the economy, but it has been historically used for rolling out important developments around tax, policy, and various initiatives of the government. Indeed, with India being the largest democracy of the world, and this budget touching one-fifth of the human population that resides here, but also foreign investors who have stakes in this large country. About three themes came out very strongly in this budget. I think the first one was just about the fine act of balancing the numbers very well. The finance minister stood its ground on the fiscal consolidation, has kept the fiscal deficit within pre-agreed parameters without at all losing ground on the investment in both the rural or the infrastructure sector, which are the two very strong pillars of the Indian economy. The second key theme, if I may, you know, create a buzzword called tax inclusion, we've all been used to financial inclusion. But moving out from the demonetization into the GST era, there is clearly an understanding that there's a lot of the economy which is not really in the reported space and is not paying its due share of taxes. With that theme in mind, we saw at various places in the budget, the finance minister putting out carrots to the entire sector which is outside the tax net to say, come in. Whether it is about reducing the corporate rate of tax for the small and medium sector enterprises from 30 to 25 percent, whether it is about halving the rate of tax for folks earning incomes up to 5 lakhs, whether it's about telling the new taxpayers we're not going to scrutinize you or your returns for the first one year, or even more about getting a few things around ease of business. And of course, the important part about mentioning that accountability would be introduced as far as tax administration goes. The third important part of this budget reminds me of an old saying, and that is, if it is not necessary to change, it is necessary not to change. And there was a lot of rumors prior to the budget around whether inheritance tax will be introduced, whether the holding period for shares in listed markets would be increased from one year to two years in order to qualify for the more liberal long-term capital gains regime. Fortunately, none of that happened. Coming to the more specifics around taxation, there has been foreign investors some reason to cheer. On the equity side, the finance minister has brought in some level of clarification saying that the indirect transfer provisions will not apply to category one and category two foreign portfolio investors. He's also stated that they will come out with clarifications, giving some benefit to other forms of investors where the money is being distributed overseas out of a direct sales happening in India. On the debt side, the extension of the window of 5% withholding tax for foreign debt flowing into the country for the next three years is indeed a welcome move. So the government has been thinking both about flow of capital into the country as well as debt. More specifically, as far as domestic uh, uh, taxpayers are concerned, there's been a bit of relaxation on the domestic transfer pricing front. Unless you've got one entity in your group which is claiming some form of profit-based exemption, you will not be required to uh, report or go through the compliance on domestic transfer pricing. Again, a uh, very logical move because if both the entities are landing up paying almost the same rate of tax, right, uh, where was the need to really go down this compliance route? Specifically on the tax front, for domestic investors primarily, uh, a lot of uh, relaxation and benefits have been provided on the real estate space, affordable housing being one of them, but also aligning the holding period for land and buildings at two years, which is exactly the holding period that is there for the unlisted shares uh, when one gets down into computing capital gains rates. There's also clarification given that conversion of preference shares into normal equity shares is not a taxable event and providing for tax-free transfers uh, offshore 
of Indian rupee denominated bonds issued by Indian companies. And of course, the levy of a 10% tax on sale of carbon credits uh, brings a bit of certainty to that area of a bit of interpretation involved in earlier times on this. On the flip side, uh, the government has tried to plug in uh, some of the uh, loopholes and widen the tax net as well. There is a proposal to enhance the levy of the additional distribution tax to persons other than individuals and HUFs. There is the proposal also to increase or widen the applicability of so-called gift tax act which was restricted to individuals and HUFs and to certain companies on certain transfer of assets. Uh, the proposal is now to cover all persons and cover you know, a whole host of transactions at that. A few other small things, whether it is around the levy of withholding tax on rent payments exceeding 50,000 or for that matter, limiting the amount of house property loss that can be set off against other income to two lakhs. Uh, but I guess this is all part of, of the much larger picture, uh, what comes out with a rather positive twist uh, to the whole space. Thank you.